cord. Okay, so what we're going to do today is kind of, uh, several of you were saying that you felt like you needed a little more practice on maybe domain and range, maybe extrema, that kind of thing. This will give you that because we're kind of going to do the reverse of what we were doing. Whereas last week we were looking at the graph and we were analyzing it. Now we're going to look at some analysis points and we're going to kind of sketch the graph from there. So hopefully it'll kind of concrete those things in. So before we do, let's talk about some vocab. <sighs> so exciting. You're going to know what all of these are. I just know you will. What is an x-intercept? Where it crosses the x-axis, right? Crosses x-axis. Guess what my next question is? <gasps> Y'all are so smart. <laughs> What's the y-intercept? And it crosses this time the y-axis. Um, I will say, keep in mind that, oh my goodness. Will somebody pick that up, please? Is that, remember, if it crosses the x-axis, that means the point, the x is going to have a value, but the y is always zero. Right? And same with y, only the x is always going to be zero, and the y is going to have a value. Okay? Um... You might not know this one. When is a function considered positive? When it Say it again. Exactly. The function itself, when we start talking about function, when we say the function, we're generally talking about y. Okay, so when the function is positive, is when it's above the x-axis, so when y is positive. So the function is positive when it's above the x-axis. So where do you think it's negative? Below. When is a function, and this might sound similar to positive, but it's not. When is a function increasing? I'm just so, yes, if you're thinking in terms of slope, it would look like a positive slope. Everything doesn't have a slope because... Is increasing when x and y There you go. There you go. Good job. Good job. As x and y both increase, then the function is increasing. <laughs> uh -oh. We have a health science baby in the room. That's what you hear in the recording. <laughs> All right. So as X increases, we're talking about to the right. Y increasing would be going up. So it does, it does look like a positive slope. We did a quick diaper change on the baby. We're good to go now. <laughs> All right. Um, decreasing. So if increasing means that both of them are going up, then both of them are going up. Well, you would think. Uh -huh. <laughs> think about slope. When slope decreases, okay? As So you always want to think as x increases, what is the function doing? So as x increases, which means look which way. Right, so if you look to the right, as you move right, what is the graph doing? Going down. Y decreases, that's right. So, and I know you did because you were talking about the slope. So if it looks like a positive slope and that area is increasing and then not would be decreasing. So if I look at something like, and it's where we changed, we, we talked about changing direction and whatnot. <clears throat> Turning points happen whenever it stops increasing and starts decreasing or vice versa. So from the end here, what is the function doing? Increasing. Increasing. As you look right, what is it doing? It's going. It's getting higher, right? So this is increasing. And then to the right, until I hit the next turning point, right? This is decreasing. And then it's what, Connor? Increasing, that's right. 
as you move right, is the graph going up or down? You have to go left to right, though. You can't go right to left. So do it just like you read. As you look this way, it's going up, 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 up. Oh, it stops going up, and it starts going down, 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 down. It stops going down, stops going up. Okay. It changes direction at those maximums so and minimums. Do they read right they read to left? Or up, up and down. They read up and down. Uh, no, because you know what? Math is the universal language. That's why we love it. <laughs> math. No, it's math. It's definitely math. <laughs> All right, and then we have in behavior, and I'm not going to go over that um, extensively because we did that Friday. But in behavior of this, describe the in behavior of this little sketch here. As X approaches. Uh huh. My pen can't keep up. F of X approaches positive infinity, and then that's exactly right. Oh, stop. Negative infinity, the graph goes negative. That says the right end goes up, the left end goes down. Yes, everybody good on that? So this is that, fun, I think. So that in the middle, that's nothing. Right? In the middle what? So no, when you talk about in behavior, you only describe the variance. It doesn't matter what happens in the middle. We'll use other things like intercepts and, thing and, and extrema. All right, let's see if you can sketch. I want to read. This is a word problem. Huh? Then the function is increasing. A straight line is always either always increasing or always decreasing. All right, uh, this is, if you just want to follow along, I will read it to you, but I am not going to copy everything on here. It's on page 111, but you definitely don't have to. So listen carefully, because I'm going to give you some features, and then we're going to graph it, okay? And this is in the form of a, like a paragraph word problem, but it's not the type of word problem just yet that we're going to get to. Mm -hmm. Use the given key features to sketch a linear graph. What's my first key there? Linear. 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 The y-intercept is negative 70. I already know where it's crossing the y-axis, right? The function is positive for x is less than negative 30. Hmm. x is less than negative 30. Is po what does it mean when the function is positive? It's above the, the x-axis, right? Mm -hmm. So when x is smaller than negative 30, it's above the y-axis. But when it's less than negative, when it's greater than negative 30, it's below. Does that make sense? So maybe that might be my, I'm thinking that might be my x-intercept, right? If it's positive here but negative here and it's definitely a line, where does it change? It's got to cross over to change, right? All right, we'll see. Let's keep going. Um... The function is decreasing for all values of x. And the end behavior looks like this. As x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. Y'all sure you're not hot in here? Oh, it's sticky hot in here. <laughs> All right, let's let's break this down a little bit. I'm I'm talking about a graph. The easiest thing here, in my opinion. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. We should all be able to do that, right? That's my y-intercept is negative 70. So maybe I don't understand exactly what that means just yet. When x is less than negative 30, it's positive. Let's see. Tell me what decrease, yeah. Sure, sure, go ahead. I'll give you a second. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead. What does it mean when it says x is less than or less than positive 30? How does that work? All right, let's see. 
So negative 30, I put, I'm going by tens on my graph, okay? I'm going to say that that third tick mark is negative 30. So when x is less than, so I'm going to put a little imaginary boundary here. Anywhere left, it's above the axis, right? That's what less than means. Does that make sense? When x, when x is less than 30, so x is less than 30 everywhere from here this way, right? Then the function's positive. So somewhere over here is my graph. That's the line that is. So it's going Which means, right, which means that on this side, it's got to be below. Does that make sense? That baby, my goodness, he is needy. All right, does that make sense? Sort of. Okay. What makes sense to me is the infinity. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Um, what I'm going to say, if your function ever changes signs, if it ever goes from positive to negative or negative to positive, it happens at an x-intercept. It has to. There's no other way for it to do it. So if that's the case, this is where it's got to be coming through, okay? Now we know there's only one way to connect those two. We only need two points to make a line. We know it's a linear function. So I'm gonna go ahead. That's very distracting. <laughs> He's got another bad diaper? <laughs> Maybe if you rock him. <laughs> That's what he wants. <laughs> okay, so let's let's check the end behavior here. Okay, does it check? As as x goes positive, does the graph go down? Yes. As x goes negative, does the graph go up? Yes. Are we talking about the function going down this way? We're talking about the ends of the function. So on the on the right side, does it go down? And on the left side, does it go up? Yes. So it checks that. So is everything? Let's go back and check. I thought you I thought you read it left to right. So wouldn't that first one be? Well, but you're you're thinking about increasing, decreasing. It said the function is always decreasing. So left to right, it's always going down. Guys, shh, shh, shh. yeah. Say that again. Decreasing for all, right? And it's linear. But no, it keeps going forever. All right. That means... The whole time, the entire graph left to right is always going down as you move left to right. Now, if it said it was decreasing um, for all x is less than 30 or negative 30, that would mean it would be decreasing until it hit here. But because it's a line, it's never going to change directions. It's a linear function, so it's always going to be decreasing or increasing. Yeah? How do we, like, what do we do if it's not linear? We're going to get to something like that. Let's try another one. Let's up the ante a little bit. Yes. As we get through this, do not forget things like continuity. What does it mean for a function to be continuous? You don't have to lift your pencil, right? What's the opposite of continuous? Or what's the discrete? Discrete means right. Um, how, we know about extrema. We talked about that. And symmetry, linear symmetry means what? It reflects about a line. There is some line that it reflects about. What about um, point symmetry? It rotates 180 degrees around a point and maps back onto itself. So let's keep those things in mind as we sketch these next ones, okay? Y'all ready? This is a nonlinear function. I'm, again, I'm, on, I'm running through the examples in your book so that if you need to go back and read them, you'll have something to go back and read. The y-intercept, this is a nonlinear graph, by the way. Nonlinear. This is what you'll be doing on your homework. 
Then we'll do a real word problem and we'll be done. The y intercept is negative 5. Now, that means the point is 0, negative 5, right? Because x is 0. The function is continuous. That's nice to know. The function is positive when x is less than negative 3 and ooh, x is greater than 4. Oh. But really, what is that telling me? When does it change? But when does it change signs? When it does what? When it crosses the x-axis. So what is a good assumption as to where this function is crossing negative 3 and 4, right? Because if it's changing signs, it can only change signs when it crosses the axis, okay? Well, think about it. If I'm on, don't write this down to shit, but if I'm on this graph, let's say I just, let's say I have a parabola, okay? Let's say this was negative 3 and this was 4, this is kind of the opposite of what this one is. But here, this is where the function is negative, right? Because it's below the axis. This is where it's positive, and again, it's negative. In order to change from positive to negative or negative to positive, it has to cross the axis to do that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So this one, if less than 3 is positive, that means somewhere up here. Greater than four is this way, so there's some middle pieces here. So that means it's got to be crossing there so I can become negative. So would those be called uh, like strength? Not just yet. These are just, um, it's just another way really to describe the zeros is what it's doing right now. Just to make sure you understand the sign of the function itself. So he didn't want to bottle two minutes ago, but now he does. Okay. Fun. That's typical of a real baby, so that's good. Um, the function, I, she had to get, I signed and said it would be fine for her to bring it over here. They get teachers to approve it. Um, the function has a minimum at 2, negative 6. The function is increasing. Increasing means what? increases both of them are increasing so it increases when x is greater than 2 so from the point 2 on it's increasing um, and then the end behavior looks like this as x approaches positive infinity the function approaches positive infinity and as x approaches negative infinity, the function approaches positive infinity. Sketch the graph. You know what I think I tried to do yesterday? Like, I would put, like, as negative x. Like, as negative x. Mm. All right. I'm going to plot the easiest stuff first. That's, that's the way I start these. What are the easiest things? Y is negative This is pretty easy. That is straightforward. There is no intuition there, right? I mean, it is, it is negative 5. Put the point there and be done with it. There is a minimum, and minimum tells us a couple different things, right? It tells us it's a low point, but it also tells us that the function does what? It turns. Oh, okay. It changes direction. Okay. And if it's the minimum. And if it is if it is a minimum, well a minimum goes from decreasing to increasing. That would be the definition of a minimum, right? Going down, going down, then it starts going up. Okay. So this is a minimum. This is the point two, negative six. If it's a minimum, do we agree that this has to do this? Yeah. And it's going to have to start coming back up some way. I don't know where or how yet, but it's going to have to start coming back up because that's a minimum. It's not linear. It's going to be what? At four. Why do you say that, Eliza? 
It's positive. That's exactly right. At, at four, so here's two, three, four. At, from here on, it's got to be above the line, right? And then from here left, it's got to be above the line, which means anything else, it's got to be below. Do we agree? Okay. Increasing when X is greater than two. Well, we knew that because if they tell us it's a minimum here, we know it's got to turn. But if it's always increasing from that point, I'm thinking maybe I can just go ahead. Come on. Ugh. Come on. Oh, what did it do? <gasps> Y'all, where'd it go? <laughs> this is not good. Oh, this hurts. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. So I'm going to say that this does something like this. That would give me x equals 2 is here. So greater than 2 is to the right. It's always increasing from 2 to the right. Do we agree? What do you need that 2 for? Huh? What do you need that uh, increasing? Both well, x and y? if you didn't, un well, you see both x and y. Increasing, well, both x and y. yeah. Increasing that just, when x is greater than well, it was just telling you that it was. That's what I said. We really didn't need that information because we know that it does. That. But it also tells you there's no more extrema right there. There's nothing else. If it's always increasing, nothing turns or changes, right? Um, and so then let's see what else. Continuous, positive. The only other assumption I can make, because I know this has got to go up, is that this side is going to kind of do the same thing, okay? It doesn't tell us if there are any other extrema. I'm going to assume that it's giving me all the extrema whenever it says it has a minimum at this point. So now let's look. Does the end behavior match? Yes. Is it continuous? Is the y-intercept 5, negative 5? Is it positive when x is less than negative 3 and when x is greater than 4? Yes. Is it increasing when x is bigger than 2? I'd say that's a great sketch. What's the domain? Um, <laughs> it would be negative three, negative. negative one infinity, all negative infinity, 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 infinity. There is no no um Not necessarily. Because you can have holes in a function. You can have, there, there'll be. So not always, no. Well, but the graph keeps going past that. How about the range? Bottoms up. Bracket or parenthesis on the negative six? Bracket. Will it help you the most with the main range? When you said it was just the smallest, so largest, yep. the next Always smallest to me. So <laughs> domain, I always just look at the bottom of the graph itself and then I look from the bottom and I start going up. All right, y'all ready for it? It. 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 Are you ready for it? It's a challenging. The next problem. Yeah. All right. Here we go. This is on page one thirteen. Jose decides to go to a test track to drive a racing car. He drives the racing car for a little over, little over five minutes. It's a long time if you're driving fast. Y'all, five minutes driving like that on a race car is pretty. 
Here's the information that I'm going to give you. Jose starts driving at zero miles per hour. What is that? Interpret that graphically. That is your Y. Yes. But was it zero? That? Yep. That is my Y intercept. Starting point with a real life problem like this is going to be your Y intercept. It's on the Y axis. That's where it is. Yeah. It's going to be. It's not Thursday. We're going to plot time on X and we're going to plot speed on Y. We're going to just analyze the speed over time. Yeah, it's going to be the X and Y intercept. Good job. Did y'all hear what she said? No. If we're plotting time, because we're going to do something like this. We're going to do time and speed. We're going to look at how fast he goes over a period of time. And then this is not just the y-intercept. It's also the x-intercept. Because he starts at zero miles per hour at time zero, right? All right, next thing. The function is nonlinear. That's going to be pretty obvious, but okay. He's not going to just keep going forever increasing. This pen's batteries are about to die, I think. All right, nonlinear. Jose's maximum speed. So they're giving me um, extrema, a maximum. His maximum speed um, is 160 miles per hour, which he reaches 30 seconds after driving. Okay? If I'm looking in terms of my graph, that means I have a max that occurs where? At 30, 160. Okay? Yes. Um, increasing. Jose's speed is steadily increasing the first 30 seconds. At the two... <laughs> what is wrong with that baby? Did he do this all night? I'd write the paper. Yeah. All right. At the two minute mark, Jose decreases his speed, decreases for point two five minutes. Then he decreases his speed, decreases his speed, nope, this print I told y'all is so little, two minute mark he decreases for 0.25 minutes, then he stays at 100 miles per hour, come on. Stays at 100 miles per hour for 2.75 minutes. At the five minute mark, that's really weird. We're going to have to put them in the same units, yeah. He decreases. for 30 seconds and stops. <sighs> Some of them. The graph has no end behavior since Jose starts at zero miles per hour and ends at zero miles per hour. So let's think about what this looks like graphically, okay? 
It sucks. <laughs> All right, my time I'm going to do in minutes. The whole ride is right over five minutes, right? So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and five. My speed is ranging from zero up to what? 160. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh oh. Oh, boo, yes. I'm going to go by 20s. 20, 40, 60, 81, 20, 40. Okay. So here's what I do. I start at 0, 0, right? Tell me what I do. My max is 31, 60. You don't want to go ahead and put that on there? Because that's easy, right? So thir what is 30? 30 seconds. Which means what? I'm in minutes. So you got to convert. Half. Half of a minute. That's right. So at half of a minute, I'm at 160. <laughs> All right. The speed increases the first 30 seconds. That's what I just plotted. So we're just going to connect. It increases, right? And then I need to look at this, this breakdown here. It decreases for a quarter of a minute. 15 seconds, it decreases. So I still haven't hit a minute yet, right? Does it say what it decreases to? Wait, is it at the two-minute mark? Oh, at the two-minute mark. Okay, okay, okay. One two-minute mark, it decreases, I'm going to assume, to 100 miles per hour, right? Because at 2.75 minutes, one, two, and three quarters, it's 100. Are y'all with me? It doesn't start decreasing until two minutes. So yeah, it's one, two. So it's going to be steady here. And then it decreases for a quarter of a minute to a hundred. Right? Are y'all with me? It's not going to start decreasing again until five minutes. So, would you do uh, 2 15? At 2 minutes and 15 seconds, at 2 15? At what? At 2 you go 2 15 seconds, and then yes, that's what the, yes, that's what this one is. This would be 2.25 minutes. Okay? It's not going to start decreasing again until it hits the five-minute mark, at which point it's going to decrease for 30 seconds, so I actually need to go up to six, until it hits zero. Where does it start to A little over five minutes. It says at five minutes, it starts decreasing for 30 seconds before it stops. Right. It, this is just interpreting the data that it gives you. You just have to understand the vocabulary that you're working with. And in this case, they actually laid out, I didn't lay it out for you quite that way. I just read you the sentence, but they said, why intercept? Jose starts driving at zero miles per hour. I didn't tell you that. I made you interpret that yourself, okay? All right, questions? Yeah. Oh.